like a sort of strangled dolphin. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. I'm still in a GoTech fever, and that's because I uh, installed the GoTech in the machine the uh, Methanoid Atari STE. And uh, just to show you what I did actually, I, I uh, hammered a couple of these naily stubs in the bottom because there's a few little uh, brackets in the Atari ST and these slot straight in and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fix for a beautiful gadget by a beautiful guy, me. So, what I remembered after I'd done all that, and you can see the sharp nails of doom prodding through, just, uh, by the way, just get some normal sort of nails that you'd normally use to claw in some roof tiles and then just snip the heads off with the pliers. And that's it, job done. But what I remembered was the mystery speaker package, which turns out to be a thing that you actually attach to the GoTech underneath. And it does that sort of floppy noise. You know, it goes, and it looks like it does this by parasitically grabbing some power to sort of, uh, act, this transistor acts as an amplifier so you can hear something out of this little speaker so it makes a noise and that's probably connected to five volts there and that's ground. And then the trigger for the transistor is one of the address lines, which I'm guessing is one of the data address lines that's uh, on the fl floppy connector. And it, it makes a sort of a noise a bit like a floppy, basically. That's what I can ascertain. So yeah, to just sort of give you that full floppy experience. Oh cool, I just realised something. I think the display panel, by the way, in the GoTech might be here. It might be a little region that they snap off. That is an aside. So let's see how we wire this in. I've got this, which is a really bad printout and it's basically black and white, but I, I can more or less work it out. I've got my thing here, kind of laid out in the same way. So uh, let's see if I can see the same pins and I can. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty, pretty easy for us. Soldering iron is ready. What I would advise looking at this is we pr I'm gonna unwind it so we just have less tension on everything, but I'm gonna hook the biggest wires on first and those will be the speaker wires. So this is all a bit horrible. The wires they've used are really stiff as well. But I'm going to leave them long, just in case Methanoid wants to uh, relocate the speaker somewhere else. But I'm, I'm going to leave it in the case for now. He can relocate it if he wants. I won't dictate to him where or where not he's putting his little speaker. Not sure I would bother with one myself, but that's just me. So it shouldn't require really any firmware or software to make this do its thing. It should just work, I should imagine. I'm gonna little, zoom in a little bit. Maybe you'll get a slightly better view of what's going on here. So I've hooked that up to the, uh, so the speaker's going to there. The transmitter uh, base needs to go on this pin here of this sort of six pin thingy. So I'm going to just bend it back. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to plug in my glue gun so that when we're all done, I can put a bit of hot snot on it and it's going to uh, stay there forever. So let's get in there. Let's load it up. So this device has to reach over as far as uh, one of these pins. And it's looking a lot like this pin. So I'm gonna tack it onto this pin because I think it's this pin. I can check it out afterwards. But that gives me a good idea now how far I've got to play with this one, which is not very far, but I'm, I'm there. I'm already there, it's fine. I do believe that's all we've got to do. So I'm just going to count, looking at my diagram here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's on the eighth pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's on the eighth pin. So I did get that. I wasn't totally 
losing my marbles. I'm going to put a bigger blob of solder on that, and not for electrical reasons, but I want it to be mechanically. Woohoo! That's hot. Uh, mechanically a bit stronger because I don't want it just flopping around everywhere. Come on, hot snot! Uh, no. Jump cut till it's warm. I'm back. Hot snot activated. So I'm going to just plop a bit under this transistor. Woohoo! That's a good old bit. <laughs> By any measure of the word. And I'm going to put a bit here where I've bent the wires over the edge. Get in there! Incidentally, if you're using this, it's better to put a bigger blob than a smaller blob. The logic being that you have more chance of removing a big blob later than a small blob. So don't be afraid if your blob is a bit too big. You will like that later. Incidentally, if you're ever building circuits and stuff, don't use <laughs> hot glue when you're preparing your things, your PCBs, if you're still soldering because you've got no chance of ever, ever reworking that board if you've done that. So just do not use hot glue at all. Also, if you can avoid it, don't use super glue because the fumes it gives off are chokingly bad, chokingly bad. So I've popped that back in and uh, yeah, I might have actually accidentally glued it in a little bit too, but uh, that's fine. So I'm just going to route the cables, or route them, if you're in from the US. Or is it routing in the US? Router? Router? Tomato? Tomato? I actually, at this point, don't know who says it the right way. So there's the little buzzer, wrapped around, coiled in like a serpent of doom, ready to strike. Um, do I want to stop it being a bit rattly, rattly? I might just put, just put one little bit of hot knot again onto this back of this PCB or something, just to keep it in place. And what I really will do as well, I'm going to make sure I'm putting pressure on it so it's mechanically actually touching that PCB. There we go. I don't want to be insulated from the PCB. I actually want it to touch. So we don't want the, the, the glue to act as an insulator. We want it to act just purely as a way of keeping it there. So, uh, yeah, that's just about, just about set. Groovy. At last, success. The moment of truth. Wow. Bear in mind, if you ever try this at home, look at the jumpers here. Got a jumper on the very bottom one, then a gap, and then another jumper. You need these jumpers set. Apologies for the bad lighting. Right, let's choose an image. I know this is a high-res monitor, so let's try this basic program. This is one of the more... Uh-oh. Um, yeah, how do we select it? Oh, I see. Does this... Oh, this is to select what goes in what slot, does it? Search for save F9 and F10. Okay, gotcha. Let's try that again, shall we? So we're going to put in Omicron Basic, slot one. Dungeon Master, slot two. AHDI, slot three. And then we're going to hit F10. Whoa! Can hear the beeping. <sighs> it worked. Oh, I don't believe it. Look at that. It's like lightning fast. I can hear the disc sounds. And there it is. Wow. Absolutely fantastic. Ah, I can't wait. I cannot wait. So I hope that's been of some use to you if you are considering installing a kit to sort of give you your sound in your uh, GoTech. And also, I hope you've uh, 
really cotton on to this. This is quite a groovy way if you're installing it in your Atari ST. Please feel free to like this video. If you're that way inclined, click subscribe. And actually, actually do not, do not forget. Comment down below and ping me on Twitter. Call me a twat on Twitter. How about that? Thanks for watching.